So recently I did a video comparing the relative costs at Costco and Sam's Club to each other for carnivore essentials. In addition to meat, this, was, this included butter, eggs, that kind of thing, bacon when I could find it, um, some, and some other things we like, mineral water of that, you know, those sorts of things. And it came out that Costco and Sam's Club were pretty much on equal footing in terms of cost, aside from the different prices in their membership, that the real difference came down to the, um, well, like any rebates you might get with a higher level membership and a few of the other items that if you're only going there to buy butter and meat and eggs, you're going to spend basically the same money. But I saw a few things in the comments that were, that made a good point. And that's that both of these warehouse membership club stores, well, they do unnecessary things to their meat that you should be aware of. And what they do is called blade tenderizing. If you're not familiar with blade tenderizing, they have a machine that in their butcher area where they will take these perfectly fine cuts of meat, we're talking USDA prime quality in a lot of cases, and hit them with hundreds of tiny knives that essentially cut holes and slices into the, meat, into the meat to make it more tender. Why is this a problem? Well, we all know that on the outside of meat, you, find you will have bacteria. It's just the way it is. There's going to be bacteria on the outside of the meat. And I know there may be a raw carnivore watching this who's just going to roll their eyes a little bit because they've never had problems. I'm glad you've never had problems. 99.9% .9 of us are not raw carnivores and will probably never be raw carnivores. But what will end up happening is those blades will take the bacteria that's on the surface of the meat and could move them into the internal parts of the meat, the actual meat itself. Why is that a problem? Well, if the raw meat is something you shouldn't eat and can make you ill, and there have been plenty of cases of that happening, why would you want that on the inside of a steak? Think about it for a second. People, most people tend to like their steak no more than medium well, or medium rare rather. Maybe medium, like once you get to the broader world outside the carnivore and keto communities, you find medium and medium well and well done aficionados. But in our world, people advocate for blue rare and rare steaks and you know nothing more than medium rare typically let me know how you like your steak in your comment in the comments by the way um i just smoked a roast that was uh done like done pretty close to a brisket and so it was pretty well done all the way through but it was tasty and i ate a lot of that kind of cooked level of meat when it comes to roasts and i've never had a problem with you know nutrient deficiencies or anything so but if you're eating a steak that you want it to be, we'll call it rare, we'll call it medium rare, right? That's an internal temperature of around 125, 130 degrees. It's still very pink in the middle. Most of the nutrients are there, very juicy. Why would you do, as a meat seller, blade tenderize it? This, we'll get to the quality question about it in a second. Because when you blade tenderize it, the bacteria gets into the meat and has to be cooked according to the USDA, and no one really cares what they have to say on most things, but according to the USDA to a temperature of 160 degrees internally. Now think about that. What is a 160 degree internal temperature of a steak going to turn your steak into? Pretty close to brisket. Brisket typically comes out at 200 degrees. That may sound like a huge difference between 160 and 200. If you're cooking something like a leaner cut, like a leaner roast, you want to have it come, have it come out like brisket a properly cooked brisket, so it's still juicy, still relatively tender. It's not shredding the way you would with if you were doing pulled beef. Then you're aiming for 180 degrees, 185, 190, depending on the cut and how fatty it is. Why would you want a steak like that? A steak at 160 isn't going to be something you're going to want to eat. I mean, if you screw it up, you know, something happens while you've got the steak on the pan and it comes out 160, you'll probably eat it, but you won't be happy about it. So why would you then pay the money for the quality of steaks that they sell? One of the draws to Costco and to Sam's Club is that you can find beef there that is USDA choice, which is the medium grade of beef, and USDA prime, which is the higher end of beef. Costco also sells Wagyu beef. I'm very curious if their Wagyu steaks say blade tenderized. I'd probably lose it if I saw that because Wagyu, we're talking $100 for a steak. Why would you? Um, why would you do that to that steak? Let's just go back to premium for a second. The USDA prime steaks 
These are the high-end restaurant steaks. They're the most, they have the most fat, intramuscular fat of any cut. They have, they're just naturally more tender. They come from cows typically that are younger than they are. They're not veal, but they come from younger cows that are slaughtered and processed. You're paying a premium quite price for these, even at, even at, you know, Sam's Club or Costco, you know, the grocery store down the road for me sells USDA select steaks for a pretty high price. They're only really worth buying there when they're on sale or marked down. Their select price is only a dollar less than their, than the, you know, USDA prime cost at Costco or Sam's Club. We're talking 15 and a half bucks a pound. You're paying 15.49, 15.50 a pound for a ribeye steak and you're buying a family pack of them. Why would you do that if the meat then has to be cooked to an internal temperature of 160? That's what blade tenderizing does. I don't see the point. I don't understand why they do that. And this goes back to an older video I made. You've got to read the labels. Remember, some play, in, in that older video I did, a lot of these grocery stores, when it comes to like your histamine responses, like if you have a histamine response to things, you probably don't want to eat blade tenderized meat. But a lot of these stores will brine their chicken in chicken broth and what's chicken broth typically made out of it's typically made with vegetables in addition to the chicken the, to the chicken bones and things a lot of places will do the same thing to steak to beef and roasts they'll actually put beef broth for some reason so you have to read the labels i'll try to put a pic make sure there's a picture up on the screen during this so you can see what the blade tenderized looks like in terms of the label you should always read that next time you're at the grocery store let me know if you've seen this at like a Safeway or a Kroger or Fred Meyer if you're in the Northwest or, you know, HEB in Texas or wherever you are. If you've seen that blade tenderizing label at a normal grocery store, I'm very curious. I don't have that really have histamine problems too much. They really just never been a thing for me. The closest I've ever had was I went from eating, putting no pepper at all for months and months and months and months and months huh, on anything I ate to making a brisket with a ton of pepper on it, ate that and it made my stomach did not like that you know, too much too quickly. I'm, you know, I can do spices if I want them. I don't do them all the time, but I can. But I don't have histamine responses. But if you have histamine responses, that blade tenderized meat is probably going to be a problem for you. So take a look at the grocery store to see if there are, the label says blade tenderized on them. Because Costco does this. Sam's Club does this. Curious if some of the restaurant supply places do it. I would bet they don't. Um, just because they charge such a low price per pound that you're, they're expecting you're buying restaurant, you know, levels of meat at a time. But, you know, does Safeway? Does Kroger? Do they do, you know, Winn-Dixie and all these other places? So let me know what grocery store you have near you. And if you've seen them on that label, because if it's blade tenderized and you're having problems, that could be your source of problems right there. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Like and subscribe if you haven't, it really does help. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for your time today.